what is a bad karma first of all you should understand whatever is not sanctioned by dharma is a bad karma whatever is sanctioned by dharma is a good karma whatever is sanctioned by vedas is a good karma what is not told in veda is a bad karma simple so that's why we believe that veda is the only truth biggest truth because what is told to do there you do it you are doing dharma so veda tells you that the king can punish the king can kill if you are a king you can punish you can kill you have no blemish but if you are not a king you are not a commander in chief you are not a soldier you are not the one who is in interested to give punishment you are doing a bad karma so first it gives you jati which legitimates which will make many things legitimate illegitimate the first manifestation of karma second one will be ayu longevity how long you will live but is the longevity pre decided is a question is longevity pre decided or not this is dubious question we'll come to it whether it is pre decided this is 50 50 case suicide is unnatural if you do suicide you are charged with killing yourself that will always be a new karma suicide will never come as a result of prarabdha karma that you cannot do other than that akal mrityu accidental death etc death by accident death by murder is a result of bad karma if you, if you get murdered then it is a result of your bad karma okay a particular type of bad karma here it is not in your control this will happen in that bad scenario where the person have a lot of bad karma but somehow he is not able to so basically in life what will happen good karma bad karma go together okay so one good thing will happen one bad thing will happen this is the normal thread now because you have free will also the basic concept about karma is you are free to do any karma at all but after you do it as idi amin says you have a freedom of speech but after the speech you have no more freedom naidi amin was a dictator like hitler so you are free to commit karma but once you have committed it then your freedom is lost and this which karma you will do is decided by sanskaras nature behavior character your preferences tendencies this is decided by the jati if you are born a brahmin you will get a particular type of teaching if you are born a kshatriya you will get a particular type of learning that will make a particular nature so basically speaking all these karmas that you have done in in your previous lives we are talking of sanchit all these karmas that you have done in your previous life will be present in the form of sanskar right so it is not like it is written that you will beat someone no it is written krodh krodh is the sanskar that is there in sanchit okay that in this life this person should be krodhi should be angry should be short tempered this is what is there in prarab events are not there events will be formed because kriyaman is there to commit a karma you are free and with the emotion motivation and your free will to do karma you choose to do something and once you have committed it further reaction is out of your control so for this particular reason krishna will tell you that arjun kama krodh lobh moh etc anger greed lust you should not have in your nature because to have it or not to have it you can control you can be short tempered by nature but you can control it if you control it you can further control the happening of karma otherwise not so that's why when you go to bhagavad gita or any scripture the biggest virtue is vivek discrimination 
That's why it is the biggest virtue. Discrimination is the biggest virtue. That's why the biggest, most benefit planet Jupiter indicates it. You will understand a lot about astrology. Why 4,000 indicate heart and happiness both? Why? Kisne Rishi ko bola? Who told the sage that fourth house should indicate happiness also? How do you decide it? How they have decided it? And now you are asking about the only change in which way? As a cassette decided to play. Some no one of Karmo some joga that was of some joga. As a you have as a you have. So, as a soga will come to it. So, what can happen because you are free to do the Kriyaman? So, basically, one good karma, one bad karma, one good karma, one bad karma should get manifested in this order. But now because you have free will to do so, if you continue to do good karma only, then as a result of continuously doing good karma, you will be enjoying good karma only, result of good karma only because Kriyaman also, in Kriyaman two things have to be there. You commit a karma, you get the result of the karma in this life itself. The emotion of that karma, the sanskar of that karma will be stored. And that will come as a prayer of the next life. Because it is only sanskar that is told. Okay. So if you are enjoying good karma and in that meantime you are also doing more good karma, you will keep on enjoying good karma. Now in this scenario, the bad karma that you were supposed to enjoy, you are not able to enjoy it. That result of bad karma is getting restricted. Okay, this restricted bad karma will explode one day. This will result in untimely death. So that's why spiritual people have early death. Because they have had a few good, they have had good karma and bad karma also, but with that good karma and detaching themselves from anger, greed, lust, etc. Just a second. So the explosion of great bad karma results into untimely death. Okay. Other than that, the longevity that you are having, except for the untimely death. So will untimely death happen or not is also not fixed. That depends on how you are doing it. Another point is you are facing a mixture of good karma and bad karma. Somehow you are experiencing bad karma and you continue to do bad karma. Then the Kriyaman bad karma and the Prarav bad karma is so much that it cannot be enjoyed in this life because humans can have one maximum longevity, say 120 years, 130 years, one maximum longevity is there. So if your pap karma increases that particular level, if your pap karma increases to be, it becomes more as compared to what can be enjoyed in 120, 130 years, it will explode. And another Akalamirti will be there. So Akalamirti is because of two reasons. The third one is you keep on enjoying the good karma and bad karma the way it is while doing good karma, while enjoying the good results. While enjoying the results of good karma, the, how, how karma manifests? Karma manifests in the form of paristhiti, in the form of situation. So good karma lands you into good situation. Being rich is a good situation. So good karma lands you into a good situation. In this good situation, using the your blessings, you continue to do good karma. Right? Is normally what you should do. On the other hand, when there will be bad times, you will not, when there will be bad prasthiti, when there will be bad conditions, you will not be able to continue doing the good karma. There will be balance. But spiritual people, what happens with them that even when they are facing bad results, such as even when Ramakrishna is having cancer, he continues to do good karma. So this makes a this makes the bad karma get subdued. And a lot of subdued bad karma results into this thing. 
So one thing I have to be very clear that the karma, the karma results in two condition, good condition, bad condition. Okay. Now, whether happiness or misery is dependent on you, whether you enjoy the result or you don't enjoy the result is dependent on you. For this particular reason, Bhagavad Gita tells you detachment. This is why Bhagavad Gita is told as a juice of all the Vedas and Upanishads, right? Because it have everything. It have everything. 